Shalom, Kal Halalim, La Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem Rechakudash, the honors unto the apostles of Great Millstone, who I learned his truth from and who rule well, and salutations and blessings. All right, unto you hopeful elect. Um, this is a video from Sky News Australia uh, about two weeks ago, titled Gender Ideology, a Pervasive and Toxic Influence in Western Culture by Matt Walsh. Now this guy Matt Walsh, he basically did a bunch of videos. Um, and, it's, and I'm going to play it and it's going to explain itself. But basically, um, you know, to stay away from hate speech or anything like that. We're just going to get play the video, you know, for what it is on, you know, face value. You know, we're not going to be prejudicial. We're going to bring out some scriptures, whatever the spirit wills. But, um, you know, you can watch the video and make your own judgments. Okay, but we're just, th this is just to show you what time we're living in. We're not living in, you know, oh, uh, 50 years before the Lord comes or 100 years. We're right at the door. Okay, because there's no more wickedness that can exceed. <laughs> All right. And now something I've been waiting weeks to bring you. It's the extraordinary Matt Walsh, the man behind the groundbreaking documentary, What is a Woman? What is a woman? Can you tell me that? <laughs> uh, well, you're at the Women's March. You must have some idea. Please, if, if one person could tell me what a woman is. You are not here for women. We ask you to leave. What is that? A woman is not anything in particular. There is not one particular thing. It could be many things to many people. Some women have penises, right? Some men have vaginas. I like scented candles. I've watched Sex and the City. Yeah. How do I know if, if I'm a woman? That's a great well, question. You're not a scientist. You're not a gender studies major. No. How do you know that you're a man? I guess because I got a dick. Can a man become a woman? <laughs> I'm not a woman, so I, I can't really answer that. Women only know what women are. Are you a uh, cat? No. Can you tell me what a cat is? Do you want to tell us what a woman is? This 95-minute documentary is from author, speaker and podcast host Matt Walsh. He also has a book by the same name and he travelled across America and other parts of the world seeking to answer that key question see the thing is with america right when it was so-called established when uh even before when the 13 colonies and right all that all that colonialism and genocide happened all that jazz you know you had um these so-called christians right these edomites that came here and proclaimed <coughs> christianity all right, and they took up the scriptures which they had no business to, but the scriptures speak about that. What is thou to do to take care of my statues? The book of Psalms is at 55, right? Um, so basically, you know, these devils took upon the scriptures, and now they're you know, they're calling themselves the people of the Most High, you know, God bless America, and 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 the, the Bible is the supremacy of the land, and etc., you know, but. Originally, even those people, those were a bunch of warlocks and masons and, and, and sorcerers, right? The people who wrote the Constitution, the people that so-called declared America's independence, those people were all plugged in, okay? They had to get down with the program, which was the elite's program, the Illuminati back then, right? From Adam Weishaupt and and, and even before, the Borgiers, and, and this was their new world right their order i began by asking matt why he made this documentary so it's like and my point is you know from that you know because people ask oh how did it go from you know christian and and being in order you you were you really weren't in order you think you were in order but you're a bunch of uh lawless creatures right who use the scriptures wrong the wrong way you know on the left hand side so obviously the 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 end of this kingdom is going to be so corrupt and completely, you know, um, complete degeneracy will, you know, thrive in this place, right? The first place. 
Well, it starts with just recognizing that gender ideology is this pervasive, toxic influence in our culture across the world, across the Western world anyway, and uh, and also realizing that, you know, it, it, in spite of the fact that it's been so success, successful in claiming so many people's minds, um, it is really quite hollow at its core. And uh, it seemed to me, you know, going back years, that just a couple of questions really bring down the whole house of cards, starting with the question, which is in the title of the movie, of course, uh, what is a woman? If you can't define what, a word, what the word woman is, then nothing that the gender ideologues say makes any sense. None of the claims that they make make any sense if they can't define the term. And uh, as we discovered filming the documentary, they, they certainly cannot define the term. No, they can't. Even women at the Women's March were completely baffled by that question and, and didn't feel confident committing an answer. <laughs> now, there is a hero that emerges in this documentary. You've said that Scott Nugent is the hero of the film. Uh, let's, let's hear what they have to say. We have five children's hospitals in the United States promoting that. And what? That's a phalloplasty. That's a bottom surgery. We have five children's hospitals in the United States telling girls that they can be boys at $70,000 a pop in a surgery that has a 67% complication rate you see so i'm not going to get into the specifics but this you know these are facts that these people are stating you know and this is part of just that madness that this place is spewing all right this is second as just five and seven right and the sodomite or sea shall cast out fish now that sodomite or sea is dealing with what who america Okay, matter of fact, pursuant to um, is that uh, Revelations 11, Egypt and Sodom. So this place is spiritually called Egypt and Sodom. So the Sodomite sea shall cast out fish and make a noise in the night, which we're in the night, we're about to hit midnight, which many have not known, but they shall all hear the voice thereof. See that? This is the madness that many have not even known, man. <laughs> right verse 8 there shall be a confusion well, now what does the word confusion mean right you know for face value it means what you're in a you're in a you know you, you're not coherent you're bugged out right you're not on your P's and Q's but confusion in the etymology it means to mix or with fusion so when you have this melting pot, that's confusion, man. That's Babylon the Great. The word Babylon goes back to Babel, which means confusion. So this place is just stirring up this madness, man. Right? And then, and then, um, and then, uh, what do you call it? And then they push it as a science, right? And uh, they pass laws, and then you got to basically get down with it, or else you know you fall under hate. You know, hate law and 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 all all these different things. So it says, uh, and the fire shall be offsent out again, and the wild beast shall change her places, and menstruous woman shall bring forth monsters. All right. So this is the time we're living in, man. No doubt. That will kill me from infection that I can't sue on butchering a generation of children because nobody's willing to talk about anything really does take a rare courage to to put yourself out there and, and speak so honestly Matt because you know they're going to be attacked for for telling their story yeah that's absolutely true and, and there's a really interesting contrast between you know we talked of course to people on both sides of the issue including so-called experts who are proponents of this stuff and uh, for them they were very evasive didn't want to talk about anything always acting like they had something to hide uh, very vague and sort of abstract in their answers. Then we talked to Scott Nugent, and um, it was it, we just heard a clip there, and she's very open, um, very kind of raw and honest, willing to talk about anything, kind of laying it all out there. And um, I do find it to be to be heroic, uh, especially, you know, to go through this, go through the whole process of quote unquote transitioning, and then to turn around 
and warn other people against it. I think that's a really powerful thing. And it's, it's even more, it's more powerful than, because you and I can, can sit, sit here and say, you know, here are the problems with these kinds of procedures. But for someone who's actually been through it and kind of crossed that bridge, for them to turn back around and uh, shout to anyone else who might cross it and warn them against it, I think is even more powerful. So um, that's why I think that, you know, uh, interview in the film was, was really effective. As you mentioned, you spoke to doctors who perform these surgeries, uh, irreversible surgeries, on some very young patients. Uh, let's hear from one of those doctors you interviewed. What's the, what's the youngest patient that you've operated on? The youngest patient I've done vaginoplasty on um, is age 16. Do you worry that minors just don't understand enough about themselves. They're not neurologically developed enough yet to make permanent life altering decisions. Absolutely not. Uh, just a very casual dismissive attitude to a 16 year old making a decision that is a lifelong decision. There's no coming back from that. Right, there isn't. And, you know, 16 is obviously very, very young, and it's horrific that we're doing that to 16-year-olds. Um, but then you have to consider that that many times kids are um, being put down this path at even younger ages. I mean, we talked to a gen, quote-unquote gender-affirming pediatrician who puts kids on drugs at, you know, 12 years old, 13 years old. So, um, at, at very... And that's, and that's part of that sorcery. That Babylon the Great works, man. When you when you read these scriptures, man, it all links up, right? It all links up, man, because Babylon the Great <coughs> Salak here. Oh, there's a lot of these Isaiah 47 is very good. But this is the point of uh, Revelation 18 and 23. In the light of a candle shall shine. No more at all, indeed. Which is what your wisdom, illumination, all oh, your brightness, you know, your 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 your, you know, your shine, man. Most High is taking it away, because it's all a facade, it's all a sorcery, it's all it's all really an illusion that that's affecting people negative, in multiple negative ways. It says, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all, indeed. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries. Where all nations deceive, man. Sorceries dealing with primarily what? Well, uh, your your pharmaceutical industry, which you which you push on these nations, man. You push them, you know, to to to, to have this standard of medicine, and then you have their um, you you set up pharmacies, which the word pharmacy means what? That's a, the word sorcery right there. Pharmacia. You know, administration of drugs. You know, and Esau is a man that he he isolates chemicals. See, the Mosai has natural chemistry. You know, when you got when you got plants like burdock, dandelion, nettles, um, um, yellow dock, raspberry. These are all these are all herbs that have their own chemistry because of the seed, the genes, the code that that is built in them to go into the earth and dig up whatever they're meant to. For that specific plan, for that purpose, man. And but these devils, what they do is they'll isolate things, right? And then they'll even trick you now, okay, into holistic vitamins. You're not supposed to be taking vitamins because vitamins are isolated things for the most part. For the most part. You can get these things, like I said, get get you some nettle leaves, some dried nettle leaves in, either in capsules or tinctures best uh, best uh, potency and the best absorption rate is a tincture. And you got a bunch of that, that. That's a great tonic with a bunch of um, uh, minerals, man, and vitamins. But this devil, he'll isolate things and then he'll make things stronger. He'll uh, amplify, you know, and he'll he'll play God basically. He'll be the most high. He'll create the gene and the code and the purpose of of of, of whatever he is, you know, whatever he's doing. Patented, right? Because you can't patent nature, so he patents these things, man. He extracts. Certain things, you know, from the uh, from the earth, from the earth, right? And then and then he'll again he'll make it his own, which is off, man. It's off, All right? Ten years old. So um, at, at very young ages, where it, whether it's surgery or drugs that sterilize kids, 
um, we're being told that the child is, quote, making a decision at such a young age. But then, of course, it doesn't make any sense because even the people who support giving uh, sex change surgeries to 16-year-olds, if you ask them, well, should a 16-year-old be able to get a tattoo on their face or anywhere else on their body? Uh, should a 16-year-old be able to buy a gun, you know, buy alcohol, like any of these kinds of... And then of members like these, these drugs that they use, they use them for what? Hormonal change. Which again, that's 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 your own man-made. Look, you, when you when you when you're born, you're born with glands, right? If you're healthy, and you're vital, you know, you're 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 a healthy baby. You got glands. You got your pituitary gland. <clears throat> you have your pineal gland. All right. You have you have you have all these glands that produce and secrete hormones. And hormones make you act the way you act. But this devil, he'll give you synthetic hormones, man, to pump yourself with. That's why people, even something as little or so-called little now, as, um, you know, you guys that work out, man, that you guys are on that gear, right? You're, you're either on HGH or testosterone, you know, free testosterone or whatever you're on. And you're, and you're playing with these chemicals, man, these, these, these steroids and shit. You're, you're, listen, it's a very dangerous thing. You know, because there's a balance to things, man. The Most High said, "Let all things things be done decently and in order." Do you think the Most High is not a man of order? All right. Decisions. Almost everybody would agree. Well, no, that's too young. So, um, if it's too young for that, then how's it not too young to make these life-altering, permanent changes to your body? Uh, you know, that's that's the question they never have an answer to. And talking about treatments for, for kids as young as 11 or 12, uh, FINA has uh, handed down its decision to restrict trans athletes from the women's side of the competition. But they did have one exception if someone had transition, if a male uh, athlete had transitioned by the age of 12, then they would be able to compete in the women's competition. Now, Venus say this isn't to encourage anybody to transition that early and they in fact say that's not a good idea but you see this as almost a validation for transitioning children younger and younger yeah I don't uh, I, I know a lot of conservatives are celebrating this move but I, I don't I don't actually see it as a win now the win would be if the governing bodies over these various athletic competitions if they just said hey you have to be a woman to compete against women period it doesn't matter when you transition doesn't matter anything else you have to be a female to compete against women now that would be a win for sanity and for just truth and moral decency but that's not that's not what's happening here all they're saying is well you have to you know, if if a male wants to compete against women he needs to start his transition younger um which is actually uh, legitimizes childhood transitions and that's only going to be used by the other side to say well see this is why we got to get the kids on the drugs as early as possible so that they're not left out of uh, opportunities later in life um that's you know that's that's maybe looking at it as glass half empty but that's also how i think uh, it's it's going to be and these are all methods that esau uses slowly and slowly and gradually whether <laughs> you whether you want to call it hegelian dialectic or uh overton window Right, you can look those terms up. You know, it's all um, what do you call it? It's all it's all tactics that they use to break down your mind, man. You know, just like like um, like even even shows from late '90s, I'll say, uh, late '90s to like uh, uh, early 2000s. The whole goal was what? If you watch them carefully, you know, you got season one, two. And then they slowly, from from the early 2000s to the mid, they start putting in um, same-sex couples, and and they, and they push that, which which that was like a shock to see, to see two two women or two men, you know, even two women really first, because men that was out of it, but now now completely, it's it's out there, man, in in these shows. But I'm saying like from the 2000s. You have certain shows like even like Great Grey's Anatomy. If you watch Grey's Anatomy, um, for, from I think what, what season two or three or four, I think three or four around there, they they pushed that because that was around the early mid two thousands. So that was that agenda, and, and that was in every show, every theme, and they gradually, gradually push it until now, every show must have that couple, 
right? If you don't, if you don't have that couple, you, there's a problem. You're not progressive or whatever. You get, you might get cut off. You know, but um, that you know they, they use these different tactics to wear your mind because you have to remember, Isa is a carnal man. He's a he's a natural man, so he'll study all these things. He'll study your mind. He'll study how to break you down gradually. You know how to implant you, how to, or sorry, train you and program you. You know. Just. Oh gosh, I hope that's not seen or interpreted that way, but I can understand why why you have that fear. Um, now back to what is a woman. Uh, you spoke to plenty of experts, and some of them. <laughs> were triggered by the strangest things. Even the word truth was seen as triggering and transphobic. Let's have a look. Well, I'm not even talking about social context. I'm just, I'm just trying to start by getting to the truth, you know. Yeah, I mean, I'm really uncomfortable with that language of, like, getting to the truth. <laughs> Man, if we're not living in the time of Satan, okay... <laughs> the man said, "I'm uncomfortable with." Well, of course you were, man. You're the damn deceiver. You you were meant to deceive this earth, man. The whole world. And in social why, why life, is that, why is that uncomfortable? Because that it sounds actually deeply transphobic to me. Um, and the if truth? you and, and if you keep probing, we're gonna stop the interview. I if I probe about what the truth is, you keep invoking the word truth, which is condescending and rude. I'm saying how to is, you, how is the word truth condescending and rude? Why don't you tell me what your truth is and you're walking on 30 seconds more of the ice before I get up. Matt, how did you keep your cool throughout these interviews? Because just watching them is maddening. I mean, how can somebody be so offended by truth, by the word truth, by the pursuit of truth? Yeah, it, it was a challenge sometimes. Sometimes a challenge not to laugh in their face. Sometimes a challenge not to scream at the, the outrageous, ridiculous things I'm being told. But what you just heard there, that, that really, almost every conversation with these people eventually devolves into some version of that. It, 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 you know, you get away from gender and pretty soon you're getting into, well, what is truth? Is there a truth? Wh whose reality are we talking about? I mean, I had that, that, that kind of interaction so many times because what you find out is that at, at base, at bottom... Hey, that's that, uh, you know what that reminds me of? Right? Hold on. Yeah. This is... It's like it. Psalms 73.15. If I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of that children, man. You know, because these, these people, man, they, you can't say anything, you know. So so surely, surely, you know, we're going to um, be off the highways, you know, very soon. And this word... Is going to withdraw itself as the scriptures uh, in the Apocrypha it says, uh, uh, wit shall uh, hide itself and withdraw itself into his secret chambers and shall be sought of many but not be found, man. You know, so surely we're going to be not needed soon because elect or fish, you know, they're out, you know, they're, you know, they're waking up, man. They're almost out. Everybody's almost plugged out in the Matrix, man. <laughs> okay? All the elect, I mean. Because what you find out is that at, at base, at bottom, all this gender ideology stuff, it's really a war on truth. It's really, um, uh, you know, it really comes down to yes. relativism and the belief that, uh, that we all get our own truth and our own reality. And I think that's what, that's ultimately what they're trying to defend, I think. Well, it is. It is a denial of truth, a denial of logic, a denial of biology sometimes. And, and these conversations that you had where you did keep your cool... My goodness, some of them are bordering on the absurd. We've got here another expert who's talking about, you know, whether chickens laying eggs have been assigned a gender. Male gametes. That's what makes me male. No, your, your sperm don't make you male. Then what does? It's a constellation. In reality, in truth, okay? Whose truth are we talking about? The same. Hey, she asked a good question. That's a witch, man. She asked a very good question. Whose truth are you talking about? But these people, like I said, man, they have everything is flipped upside down, man. Everything in this damn world is bugged out, right? This is. Oh, look, this is beautiful. It's, uh, Isaiah twenty nine sixteen. It says, "Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay, man." This man has flipped everything, man. 
Daniel, what is that, 7 or 8, it says he think it to change times and laws. This man wanted to take an hour off or go an hour back and or take a minute off. For, you know, this man is a demon, man. You know? Uh, for he for shall the work say of him that made it he made me not or shall the thing framed say of him that framed he had no understanding you know so so these devils man they turned everything upside down so she's talking about whose truth whose truth are you talking about we know there's only one truth there's a there's, you know it's, it's just like this man's court system it's not about the truth right if the attorney which what does the word attorney mean it means to turn what's his job to turn to turn you away from your guilt, man, to to make you, you know, uh, uh, to to make the verdict innocent on your ass, right? So, if he can paint a nice picture, then it's not about. It, it, listen, man, it's not about the truth. It's about who whose truth to convince a jury. You know. Okay. Whose truth are we talking about? The same truth that says we're sitting in this room right now, you and I. No. You're not listening. If I, if I see a chicken laying eggs and I say that's a female chicken laying eggs, did I assign female or am I just observing a physical reality that's happening in the world? Does a chicken have gender identity? Does a chicken cry? Well, does chick a chicken commit suicide? What the hell does that have to do with gender? What is this? When you listen, listen, that's why it says their tongue is, is of the tongue of, of uh, uh, asp, the venom man. Their 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 mouth is an open sepulchre, a damn coffin. They're just poison, man. You hearing this demon? Let's frame it because you're talking. You're trying. A chicken has sex like any like any biological organism. Chicken has organism. an assigned gender, but a chicken doesn't have a gender identity. So we assign female to chickens when they lay eggs. That's a, we that's... assume they're female if they lay eggs. Oh, goodness me. Now, Matt, there was a time when this sort of ideology was confined to university campuses and people thought, oh, well, you know, that's where you debate these sort of radical ideas. But this uh, movement has got enormous disproportionate power in just every facet now. You look at not just public institutions, but private institutions, the number of corporates that virtue signal about this issue. Yeah? Can you just help us understand the power of this uh, activist group, uh, such a small group, but with such disproportionate influence and power. Yeah, that's one of the reasons we, we made the movie, really, was for people to understand just how powerful this ideology is, how widespread it is. And, and that's one thing I've heard from people who've watched it is uh, lots of people have told me, well, I didn't realize how bad it was until I saw the film. And that's not the only thing I want people to take away from the film, but that is one of the things I want them to take away is, is that uh, this is not just something out on the fringes or, as you say, just in the universities anymore that we can ignore. Um, it is everywhere. And I think what happened is, you know, it seems like it, it came out of nowhere five or ten years ago, but, um, but it really didn't. It made its way into the institutions, especially academia, um, you know, government, mm. media. It made its way into those institutions over the course of decades. And then from there, I think, filtered down into the general population. And then maybe, you know, eight, ten years ago is when it kind of had it, it exploded onto the, the scene on the mainstream level. And um, and now, you know, you go anywhere and, and at least go anywhere in the Western world. And uh, people are impacted by these ideas. And many people have bought into them without even realizing that they that they have. You know, and I'm going to finish off on this. Because this is exactly what's going on. This is the time we're living in. There's no shadow of a doubt. that <laughs> This is the time we're living in, man. This is Isaiah 19 and 14. The Lord, Yahweh, hath mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof. And they have caused Egypt to err in every work thereof, man. People are just bugged out. They, you know, they're, they're about half to a quarter functional. You know, the... They're damn, they wake up drunk, man, in a drunk state because of their spirituality and their and their morality. You know, it says, as a drunken man staggereth in his vomit. Let's look up that word perverse as well. Because, like I said, man, this place is just gone. <laughs> the word is, I, I, wa, I, yum.
which means distorting, perverting, warping. This is the damn twilight zone, man. Look at this down here in uh, Hebrew, in Jesenius's Hebrew Chaldee lexicon. Depravities, perversity. <laughs> this place is depraved, man. Bug the hell out, man. All right, anyway, I hope you're edified. Kahalalim lay hawa basham yawashai. Basham rukhakadash. Double honesty, apostles of GMS. Huruwal. And the blessings to you, hopeful elect. Shalom.